Mozilla Firefox versus Brave Browser. If a single question can get a community riled up, it is this one. So let's tackle it head on. This video will give you all the information you need about each project, and if one, both, or neither are right for you. Yes, I need to say this, but I don't give a zero f what browser you're using. Seriously, I couldn't care less. It's fun because these are companies we've both criticized in the past, but again, this is meant to be objective and not subjective. So let's get into it, starting with open source. I think that's a very good starting point. Are these browsers open source? And the very easy answer is yes, Brave is open source and Firefox is open source. A little bit more of a long answer is sometimes you will find small proprietary bits inside of each of these, especially in mobile clients, but generally speaking, they are about the same level of open source and most people's definition is yes, they are open source. There's also the treatment of the FOSS community and Firefox generally has been very strong about this. You're going to hear about some developer who suggested some change and they were like, no, that happens with almost any open source project. With Brave, there was a fork called Braver Browser and Brave really did not like this. In fact, they actually sent a legal request against the company saying that the issue was the name and not the fact that they were a fork. Generally speaking, Brave has had some questionable moments with some other projects that are forked from them, and we've seen a lot fewer issues when it comes to Firefox. So just questionable, keep that on your radar. As for who's behind the company, Brave is managed by the CEO, Brendan, who actually used to be a part of Mozilla and he was fired due to some of his uh, beliefs on the world. You should read into this yourself. I won't comment on it too much further, but you should go ahead and do some research into Brendan and some of the controversy there. There's also the Mozilla chair, Mitchell Baker, who also has gone through her own controversies, mostly regarding management of the Mozilla Foundation. Another important thing is funding. And the reason why people care about funding is theoretically, the funding is going to dictate some of the decisions made by the organization. Now, it doesn't quite work this way with open source projects. It's not a direct translation, but it's still something a lot of people want to keep in mind. Brave has some search deals, so they have different uh, search engines that they give you as an option, and I assume that those search deals give them a little bit of revenue. Really, the highlight for Brave is BAT and Brave Rewards, which is their own cryptocurrency, and we're not going to talk too much about this today. If you know about it, you know about it. If you don't know about it, then check it out in the description. I'll try to leave some resources for BAT so you can see what it's all about. They do have some affiliate links, uh, mostly per suggestions in the URL search bar when you're making searches. And if you click those and you buy anything from those websites, you're gonna get a kickback from that. By default, there's cards that go through companies like Gemini, Binance, and some other cryptocurrency exchanges and whatnot. And those tools, I assume, have some kind of benefit for Brave as well. Firefox is in a very similar position, which people don't seem to talk about. So Firefox, recently, they have a 90% of the revenue comes from Google. Yeah, people are like, I need to get away from Google. I'm going to move to Firefox. And Firefox is still pretty much still standing up because of Google. Firefox is, as far as I know, transitioning over to Bing now being the default search engine. And it's kind of unknown how that's going to impact the revenue. Firefox does have some other products. They have their VPN service, which might get them some extra revenue. They also include affiliate links recently as well. They have some sponsored content. They recently started importing, just like what Brave does in the URL bar. They're, they're going to show you some suge suggestions there. They also have Pocket and some other tools, kind of like how Brave has its cryptocurrency stuff with the cards and whatnot. So very similar funding sources between these two. I think the main difference is Brave really went in the crypto route and a lot of it is self-managed by them. So they have their own uh, search engine, they have their own cryptocurrency. It's very much a Brave ecosystem. Firefox has a much looser ecosystem that I guess allows more external influence. So again, the kind of your decision what you prefer there, but that's kind of the rundown. Brave is Chromium based, which I guess is the main way that people associate Brave with big tech. Since it's based on Chromium, which is the open source uh, browser that powers Chrome and many other browsers, including Microsoft Edge, pretty much every browser that's not Firefox and Safari is likely running Chromium. Even though it's an open source project, there's still concerns about pretty much supporting any browser that runs on Chromium because there could be a possible monopoly on all of web browsing. I don't necessarily think that you should or shouldn't be using Chromium browsers personally. I think it's really up to you and what you um, prioritize in your life. If Brave wasn't based on Chromium, Brave is like an anti-big tech company, right? Like they're trying to pretty much create a whole new ad revenue model. They're a somewhat smaller company. They are kind of the anti-big tech movement in a lot of ways. They're trying to build their own search engine. They're doing a lot of cool things there. Firefox is, as of today, completely funded by Google. 
Um, that really is their main funding source. About 90% of their money comes from Google. So that's something you really need to be aware of. Either of these options have to do with Google in some strong way. One of them is a technical reliance on Google and the other one is a financial reliance on Google. So it really is just a matter of preference. I don't understand when people get angry at others for using Brave and continue to use Firefox, which probably wouldn't exist without Google's assistance, or at least to the extent that you can actually use it and it's a great product. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Again, I'm not saying one's better than the other. It's not what this video is about. I just want you to think about this and really break it down and really put some common sense into it and really come to your own conclusion. Browser engine. So this is what the engine that powers each browser is based on. And this kind of ties into the Chromium based discussion. Blink is what is managed by Google Chrome. It's what Chromium is based on, and Blink is essentially what Brave is based on. And Blink is managed by Google. Gecko is Firefox's own thing, and this is why a lot of people choose to use Firefox. They don't wanna give in to that Chromium slash Blink monopoly, and they wanna use Gecko because now you're not gonna have Google essentially controlling um, all the standards that are gonna be passed that websites have to rely on, that browsers have to rely on, and users have to rely on. Now, in regards to both of these, the reason I put not iOS, is because on iOS, Apple forces people to use WebKit, which is their own browser engine. If you really wanna get into the nitty gritty, Blink is actually a fork of WebKit, technically speaking. So actually there's WebKit, then there's Blink, which is forked from WebKit. WebKit is actually open source, by the way. So um, if that's your concern here, it's not really that big of a concern. Both of these are technically using WebKit on iOS because Apple requires every browser on iOS to be using WebKit. Brave has had the Tom Scott scandal. So Tom Scott is a very famous YouTuber. Many of you might have heard of him. I recommend checking out his channel. He posts a lot of good stuff. Brave Rewards allows creators to set up essentially um, something on their website or something on their YouTube channel. And when you, the viewer, earn that, you can tip them to these creators. The problem was Brave was allowing you to tip creators who weren't even verified creators. They never even knew what Brave was. They never created a wallet. They never did anything. Brave was just pocketing the tips for themselves. So Tom Scott came out and said, hey, I don't have a Brave wallet and people are tipping me hundreds if not thousands of dollars on this platform and they're just keeping all the money. So Brave really kind of pushed some buttons there and that should have been an obvious issue from the get-go. There was the affiliate link scandal, which we talked about in another video, so I'm not going to get too far into it. I really recommend checking out the video if you want to learn more about that scandal. There were essentially two problems. One of them um, they claim was a mistake slash bug, which I do believe, and then the second one was kind of comboed up with those, but it's two unique issues. One of them was the fact that it was actually changing the URL when you clicked the enter button, and the other one is just the fact that there were suggestions in the Omnibar. Now, Firefox does this now as well. So um, they're not going to be changing the URL when you click enter, which was the bug. There was the Tor window DNS problem with Brave. So if you were using the Tor window, Brave includes a Tor window um, for private windows. We've always, and a lot of people who know what they're talking about will caution people away from this for several reasons, but it's not a bad way to just quickly access an Onion site, but there was a DNS issue. And also I'd say the CEO has had some controversies in the past that you may or may not agree with. Those are the things to look for in Brave. As for Firefox, there's Firefox for mobile. Many people don't like the new Firefox for Android. I actually don't mind the interface, but I do dislike how minimal they've made it in some areas. I'm very unique because I like a minimal experience on my phone, but some people are very much not fans of the new Firefox UI for Android, and they were really upset with some of the features and functionality they removed from it. My biggest gripe with this is their response. This is a tweet from someone who was part of the development team for the new Android application. And these were her thoughts when people were saying they didn't like it. It's kind of an embarrassing thing for Firefox to do considering they're losing users every single month. And then when people complain about some new changes they implemented, they come out and quite literally flip off their community. So there's that, um, which I consider something that should have been really talked about. Can you imagine if Brave did this? Just something to think about. I just want you to think about what if Brave came out and literally stuck a middle finger out to their community. I think Firefox has given a lot of slack for some of the things that they do and some of the issues that they've had to deal with and some of the things they've done. There was the new tab ads, which are a recent thing that people are not happy about. They're essentially going to have advertisements on new tab pages, and they're also going to have Omnibar suggestions, which are also ads. Pocket has was also kind of a small controversy when they released Pocket and they announced that they were going to integrate it inside the browser. There's all the layoffs, which was a semi-recent issue. We talked about that a little bit more in another video. And 
And generally speaking, Firefox makes some very questionable decisions that makes us go, okay, are you actually here to be the frontier for privacy in the internet when you go ahead and do these other things that completely work against that mission? I just ask you to be fair to both browsers. Look at Brave and go, wow, they've had scandals, but so has Firefox. It's really up to your decision on what you think is more trusted, but I think there's not enough discussion on some of the issues that both companies have had to go through. We have a Brave reward set up on our channel. We have it on our website. We have it on Twitter for all of our platforms that allow Brave rewards. We have it. So it's something that we're, that we're using for ourselves um, just because we can, and we know some people use it, and it's a support method for all of you. As for my thoughts on it, I think it's all right. Like, I think it's a cool idea. I think the the issue that they're trying to target with Brave Rewards and Bat is a really unique um, issue. And I think it's something that needs to be addressed. I don't know if their approach to it is the best approach. People who immediately dismiss Bat, I, I just ask you like, why? Like, do you not want them to try to try to like revolutionize the ad industry? Cause I kind of want someone to do that. And if it is what Brave does, I wouldn't mind that. It's a fully open source implementation of the current ad revenue industry, which I think is great. Those are kind of my thoughts. It's more of a subjective part of this video, but I do ask everyone to kind of think critically about like, why do you hate that? Like, what's the hate about it? I personally hate how bloated it makes the browser. So that's why I commonly refer to it as crypto crap. A lot of you might not like the crypto crap and it does take some time to remove when you install the browser. We're talking like less than a few minutes to go ahead and remove everything, especially if you've done it before. One thing that Brave really has going for it though is it's overall very strong by default. You install it, everything's already good to go, all the settings are pretty much good to go and there's very little telemetry data collection. There was actually a research paper done that is referenced a lot by Brave, of course, that talks about how they studied all these browsers and they found that Brave has the least amount of telemetry data collection out of the box. There's also another study about, done by some other researchers essentially backing this up and showing, hey, Brave actually has some like really great things in place. Things that traditionally rely on Google, like the safe search and whatnot, Brave actually proxies everything properly in a way that protects everything from Google. And they actually do a fantastic job of this. Firefox out of the box collects more telemetry than Brave. You have to go into the Firefox settings and disable some things. Firefox says this is anonymized, but again, if a big tech company says that any telemetry is anonymized, how do you respond? Anonymization is a very loose term. It can probably de be de-anonymized. Firefox shouldn't be treated any differently in this realm. I don't know why they are. I don't know why people are all of a sudden okay with it when Firefox does it. They collect telemetry by default more than Brave does. You have to disable it. It's something that could be so easy. When you set it up, Firefox could just give you a quick check mark that says, do you want to opt into Firefox telemetry during the setup part of the installation? They could do that and they don't. And it's things like this that make me ask like, well, why? There are some unneeded features. There's pockets. They recently have the new tab ads and some other things that are built into Firefox that I think line up with the crypto crap. They're pretty much the same. So that's kind of the breakdown. I'd say there's really no clear winner when it comes to out of the box concerns. They both just have different concerns. The cool thing is it is all out of the box concerns, which implies that all of these issues can be fixed and they can. This is stupid, but I, I hear People call Brave spyware and people call Firefox spyware. And I go, no, neither of them are spyware. I just wanted to put that in there to just set that straight. I did want to quickly put in some technical security here. So Chromium is generally regarded to be one of the most secure browsers out there. The sandboxing in Chromium is supposed to be more advanced than Firefox's. So generally speaking, if we're talking about technical security, it's been commonly touted that Brave which is based on Chromium. So it's really a Chromium is stronger than Firefox. This is up for debate though. And Firefox actually fights back on it a lot. And all I'm gonna tell you is what I like to see is real world implications. Um, you're gonna hear a lot that this is more secure than this, but I like to ask, okay, when will this actually impact users and what users will it impact? Cause it's not gonna impact every user the same way. I will tell you Firefox security based on my own research seems to be fine. So again, I put strong and fine. I really like to caution people away from the, is it secure or insecure group? Because it's very rarely either of those. It's normally in the middle. It's like, this is more secure than this. Just something to think about. So I like to say strong and fine in this specific instance. As for fingerprinting, uh, Brave has fingerprint randomization. This is somewhat new and it's very exciting. And essentially every time you are using Brave, it's going to use a new randomized fingerprint. Meaning even if you have a unique fingerprint, it's gonna be brand new the next time you use it. 
Firefox also has protection and I'm finding a little bit less information on the um, implementation that Firefox uses. But generally speaking, yes, there is fingerprint resistance built into Firefox. I believe that's on by default now. If it's not, you can enable it in the settings. And it's something you can check in the about config menu. So good job to both of them. This is something that's somewhat new for both of these services. And it's very exciting because this was not an easy thing to protect against. In regards to extensions, um, both have great support. I'd say that since Brave is based on Chromium, you're going to find some more extensions in the Chrome store, but Firefox might actually have some more of the privacy security oriented extensions. In my opinion, I don't use extensions with Brave. Like if I'm using Brave, I just install it and it's good to go. So I'd actually put down that they're mostly unneeded. Um, and actually same with Firefox. Firefox used to be a use Firefox if you're gonna harden it type of recommendation. But recently, and this is really exciting because extensions, each extension has to be individually managed each extension creates a new privacy and security risk. And if there's a way to avoid having to install 10 extensions, it also saves time. And we're seeing browsers implement more and more of the things that extensions used to do. So we're seeing that Firefox and Brave are blocking trackers by default, which makes things like Privacy Badger a little bit less useful. Both of them now implement HTTPS everywhere by default, meaning you don't need to use HTTPS everywhere anymore. So we're very excited to see this. It's something that's very good and it means the browser direction is at least moving somewhat in a positive direction. As for syncing, the reason I wanted to throw this in is I did want to kind of highlight that you can sync your bookmarks, passwords, everything without an account with Brave. Technically, I would still consider it somewhat tied to you and your devices, but there's no account. With Firefox, you need to have a Mozilla account, with, which is an email and a password, and you can set up 2FA. It's more of a traditional account. With Brave, you just scan a QR code on your devices and they just magically sync without you having to engage with them. Some people actually prefer the account setup. I don't, but some people do. So this is just something you should consider if you're a person who's trying to avoid having maybe an extra account and something that doesn't even require personal information to sign up for. Brave kind of has Firefox beat there, in my opinion. As for clients, I'm trying to relay to you what I've seen in the community. You can strongly disagree with what the community thinks, and that's okay. Generally, I have seen very few complaints with Brave's clients. That's just what I've noticed. I don't see many people complain about Brave as a client on both mobile or desktop. It just seems to be a browser that works. Firefox, I hear mixed things about for desktop, which seems to be mostly personal preference based. I personally prefer using Brave over Firefox for desktop. But that's a personal preference, and I see kind of it being 50-50, which means it really is just personal preference. However, mobile clients seem to overwhelmingly be disliked with Firefox recently. So again, I actually don't mind the new Firefox UI myself. I'm just relaying that the mobile clients definitely were a questionable move, and a lot of people do not like the new interface. So just something to think about, something to try out. Now we're going to dive into some of the notable features. Brave has private browsing and on top of private browsing, they have private browsing with Tor. So essentially it's going to route everything inside a private browsing window through Tor. This is not meant to replace the Tor browser. They say this on their own website. It's not as good as the Tor browser. What I think this is great for is someone sends you an onion URL and it's just a news article and you just want to open it real quick without having to get the Tor browser out. And also if you're just looking at it as a slightly more anonymous private window, then it does that too. It's kind of nice. I don't see pe people criticize it and I go, well, what's the harm in having it? Um, with the exception of maybe people using it in a misleading way and not understanding the limitations. But outside that, it's just one more thing you can use in your toolbox and I think it's great. Brave has profiles, which is built into Chromium and profiles allows you to essentially create multiple users and each of them have their own bookmarks, their own settings, their own configuration. You can sync, right, with Brave Sync and it's going not going to sync your profiles. It only syncs on a per profile basis, meaning you can theoretically be syncing four different accounts or two or however many you have on your machine, two different devices. Profiles are great. We're gonna talk about the Firefox equivalent of that very soon. Brave has ad blocking out of the box. Now, Brave's ad blocker is not perfect by any means, but it's a great just out of the box solution. It's great that I can just tell people, install this browser, it'll block ads for you out of the box, it'll make you more private out of the box than what you currently have, and it'll make you more secure out of the box, and it's probably gonna be a faster web experience. It's great, it's a great selling point for Brave, and also on top of that, Brave has a very similar interface because it's based on Chromium, and if someone's using Chrome, I just go use this. It's better in almost every way. 
As for Firefox, Firefox likewise has private browsing. That's just every browser has private browsing nowadays. Now what Firefox has instead of profiles is they have containers and you can install this um, and you can set it up and it's gonna work semi-similar to how profiles work. Personally, I prefer the implementation of profiles better than containers, but this is completely personal preference. They both effectively accomplish the same thing and they're both things that I recommend you implement unless you're looking to have eight different browsers on your machine. Up next, OOTB is out of the box. So out of the box security features. Brave Shield is like the shield. It has the Brave logo and the Omni bar. This includes HTTPS everywhere, script blocking, um, which you can customize on a per site basis, or you can have global defaults. Same with the HTTPS and also their tracker blocker. On top of this, they have fingerprinting protection. And the coolest thing is it's very accessible. It's very easy to understand and it makes people feel like they're being more private online which i think is important because i don't think there's enough credit being given when people are doing things you can improve your privacy and not have any kind of visual or understanding you can't see it being improved and i think that this actually really helps and firefox has it to some extent too though i don't think it's as obvious or as prominent and on that note, Firefox has enhanced tracking protection, which also includes HTTPS everywhere, as well as fingerprinting protection, and also trackers and whatnot. So they're both going to accomplish very similar things out of the box. Brave used to be well ahead of Firefox in this realm, but Firefox clearly has caught up in most aspects. So both of them accomplish similar things out of the box. Just so you know, a lot of people install uBlock Origin and add a tracker and script blocker that you can install on both of these web browsers after the fact. Um, UBO is kind of a nice thing to implement regardless of what browser you're using. As for out of the box privacy features, both of them block third party cookies by default. So that's what 3PC is, third party cookies. Both of them block trackers and scripts, excluding a few. And what I mean by that is people harp on Brave so much because wait, why did they whitelist social media sites? Because they don't want everything to break. So anytime there's an embedded tweet, that's actually whitelisted by Brave. You can turn this off in the settings. It's not a big deal. Just go into settings. There's, I believe, a Google, Facebook, Twitter opt-out. There might be Facebook as well. But those are things that you have to go in and say, no, I don't want these whitelisted. I guess Brave could make that an option when you're setting it up. But I think for most people, they don't want to change that. In fact, I don't normally change that myself, myself either because I don't want things like embedded tweets to break because that's kind of an important part of some websites I'm visiting. Uh, Firefox also excludes a few unless you go in and turn on the aggressive enhanced tracking protection. Brave is honestly accused of doing really weird things that Firefox does the same thing for. I don't know why where that comes from. I think maybe it's because Brave has very strong marketing and their advertise is like a very privacy friendly and anytime they don't follow that to it, like the perfect extreme people like get really upset about it. It might be that, but either way, I'd say they're both similar and very, most of these categories are very similar. I, when people use Brave, I really tell them you don't need to harden it. Um, one, because it's not really needed. It takes care of most things out of the box for you, but also it's kind of difficult to harden Brave. There's not really like a, a community consensus on how to do it. There's some Chrome flags you can adjust. There's some extensions you can get. You can use uBlock Origin as well, but there's just less community guidance on where to go with, with this process. Firefox, on the other hand, it's very common to harden Firefox, and there's a very good community understanding of the way to do that. So Firefox, you can, but it's becoming less necessary. Like I was saying earlier, Firefox is taking care of a lot of things out of the box for you, which is really good because there's some drawbacks to installing extensions, which I talked about earlier. Each extension poses a new security risk, a new privacy risk, and they increase the ability to be fingerprinted. So the less extensions you have, generally the better. And the fact that we're getting away from extensions recently is I think awesome. And now I put some final notes. Both are great browsers. If you're saying Brave sucks, ooh, or if you're saying, ooh, Firefox sucks, oh, terrible, hate it. If you're coming in with that attitude and just saying Brave sucks, ignore it, doesn't matter what your needs are, you're being kind of a dick. And you're not really actually preaching privacy in what I think is a productive and beneficial way to the world. So that's what I have to say to that. I think both are great browsers in their own right. I think it's your job to figure out which works for you. On that note, both excel in different places. There are some things Brave does better than Firefox and there are some things Firefox does better than Brave. It's your job to look at those pros and cons and see which one fits your threat model and your needs 
better. You can use both browsers. I don't know why I have to say this. People are like Firefox or Brave. And it's like, why not both? You can literally have both installed. Again, neither are spyware. Both are open source. There's been people who say, oh, I caught Brave pinging this one thing. And it's like, yeah, it's Brave's updating service. Like neither of them are spyware. There's no evidence that they do any secret spying on your computer. It's not a thing, people. Okay, if it does become a thing, I will gladly come forward and tell you, oh my gosh, everyone, it is now a thing, but it is not a thing as of October 24th, 2021, when I'm recording this video. You can use either, so you can choose between them if you don't like one, or you can use neither. I don't know why I have to say this to people. It's like mind blowing. So devices matter as well, right? Like it's possible you like the iOS version of Firefox, but not the Android version. So the devices you use can actually influence the browser that you all end up choosing as well. Keep that in mind. Um, features also matter. Some people might never open an onion link and they're never gonna use Brave's Tor window. I personally use Brave's Tor window a lot and I also use the Tor browser bundle, but I use them for different things. So it really does come down to your use case and what features you personally enjoy. And on that note, compatibility and your experience matters, right? If you use Brave and you find that it works well for you, but someone in the community tells you, no, it's not working well for you. You and your experience is probably correct. You might be incorrect on a technical difference. You might've been thinking that Brave was protecting you in this way and someone is now educating you. No, it doesn't. So now it might be failing you in this one aspect of things. In terms of your experience with the browser, if you say, I enjoy this browser and someone else goes, no, you don't. No, you enjoy the browser. Same thing with Firefox as well. Finally, I did want to say that this is just a comparison between these two browsers. You can also consider the countless alternatives. There's LibreWolf, which is essentially like a de-Mozilla Firefox, right? They take Firefox, they make it a little bit better out of the box, they install uBlock, uBlock Origin out of the box, they try to keep up with security updates. It's something to check out. There's the Tor browser. You can't go wrong with the Tor browser. There's ungoogled Chromium, which I'd say is probably a good alternative to Brave, but people go, Brave is useless when there's ungoogled Chromium. And I go, no, that's not true because with ungoogled Chromium, unless you're on Linux, you have to find a way to manually update it. Sometimes you have to build it yourself. Um, extensions can be a little bit tricky with ungoogled Chromium. And also Brave has valid features that aren't in ungoogled Chromium that everyone just seems to ignore. And they're things that we've talked about in this video. So feel, feel free to go through this chart. Again, you can get ungoogled Chromium and you can customize it in a way to essentially match what you have with Brave, but not everyone wants to do that. So I think it's kind of a weird argument to go, Brave is useless when there's ungoogled Chromium. That's like saying Firefox is useless when there's Tor browser, in a way. Like Tor browser is in a, essentially just a better Firefox in almost every way. So why would you ever use Firefox? And it's because there's different use cases. There's different reasons to use these different browsers. There's also others. For mobile, there's Bromite. Um, there's DuckDuckGo mobile browser, and th there's just so many things you can use out there. And we talk about them a lot in our content. You are not restricted to these two options. We're not telling you you're restricted to these two options. And we're not even telling you that Brave is better than Firefox or Firefox is better than Brave. This has been an objective comparison and I hope you've enjoyed it. And that is the end of the video. If you like comparisons like these, definitely let me know. I wanna hear what you guys think about these. Uh, we got a very, very positive reception from our messenger comparison. And I hope that we're able to kind of replicate what you liked about that with things like browsers and maybe other things down the road, like operating systems and whatnot. So really just let us know what you think about this. I'd love to hear. And aside from that, leave your comment below on whether you like Brave or Firefox better, but in a productive way. Don't just be like, yo, I, me and my homies hate Brave. Brave, no, like come in and say like, I don't like Brave because X, Y, Z. And I like Firefox because they don't do X, Y, Z. Come on, be productive, be a productive part of society. I wanna hear, and I think other people would wanna hear some good arguments to go either direction as well. I don't think that's too much to ask for, but um, based on how long I've spent in the privacy community, uh, uh. <laughs> so that's it for this video. Thanks everyone again for watching. I really appreciate it. And also make sure to subscribe to us if you are not already. And also give us a like, share this around. Really like, come on, like promote this stuff. And also we have a Patreon and we also accept Monero for donations. You can help us spread privacy to the masses by giving us direct funding to do it. Please, we need it <laughs> to like live. So thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next time on Techlore.